Steve Jim. He's a certified personal trainer. And so all this month we're talking about building strength. And so as you think about like building strength, like what are some of the things you do, maybe a regular routine in order to build strength? Yeah, you've got to be in a routine for sure. Um, there's several different things that kind of play into what it's actually going to take to build strength, to build muscle. Um, so generally, if that is kind of the goal, it's going to be heavily surrounded by weightlifting. So lifting weights. Um, you mostly want to group muscle groups together that are going to kind of work together. So kind of an example we think of is like your push muscle. So we're thinking like your chest, your shoulders, your triceps. I'm going to get in the gym. I'm going to train those muscles, um, tax them pretty good. The next day, obviously, I don't want to train them again because you don't want to be overtrained. Um, so we're thinking about maybe doing the opposite. We're doing our pull muscles, our back and our biceps. Maybe that third day in the gym, you're hitting your legs. That way you give everything a nice break. Dreaded leg day. Right? Dreaded leg, leg day. day. Some people <laughs> skip it. Don't skip your leg day. Uh, and then you kind of cycle that back through um, the remaining part of the week. And then there's a lot of supplemental things that you can kind of add in throughout the week too um, to kind of get just a little bit more out of it. And that might look like some, some cardio, whether that be running, whether that be biking, whether that might be high intensity interval training. So incorporating some weights with some cardio, um, all things that come together to kind of build a good routine, help you build strength, build muscle over time. This is like way more than just going to the gym. It's really like a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. And for me, you know, that's why I built a gym in my garage because I want to make sure that I'm giving myself every chance to have this be a part of my life. It's not just the weights. It's the nutrition, it's the people you surround yourself with that ultimately help you live this lifestyle that's gonna get you healthier, more confident, feeling better, looking better, all those good things. So as we are beginning this new series today, we're talking about building strength, and we're gonna see how these principles actually apply to our mental strength as well. Well, hey, welcome again to The Journey. I'm Matt, and I wanna say a special welcome to those joining us online. Glad you're with us as we are talking all of this month about being mentally strong and building strength. And as Jacob was talking in there, um, he is, again, a certified personal trainer, and he's been a part of our church for a long time, so uh, an important part of our church. So glad that he was willing to share with us. He's going to be sharing with us all month long. But if he was talking about all that stuff about muscles and working out, and it was kind of like, I don't know if you noticed, like I was like nodding and like talking along, but I, I, didn't, I didn't catch it all. Um, so I'm glad I had to watch it a couple more times. I need to take some of those things into practice there. He's, Jacob isn't here today, actually, because he's running a marathon. He was like, I'm going to run a marathon this year. I'm like, Yay, go for it. Uh, it sounds horrible to me, but... Uh, he, that's what he's doing today, running 26 plus miles. Um, so, uh, so great to have him as part of the series, though, and giving us some insight. And we're going to see, as I said in the video, about how some of these things actually apply to our mental strength as well. And, you know, our mental health is a big topic these days, and it's a big issue for a lot of people. I actually was turned on the news this morning uh, just to catch the weather, and they said it wasn't going to be windy, but then it was windy today. Anyways, um, uh, one of the things, though, on the news this morning was about a um, mental health crisis and how, especially with, with teens, how this is a huge issue that is weighing on them. And, and so I saw that on the news today. And it seems like I see a lot of people just say, man, I'm really struggling with my mental health or my mental health isn't good or I'm stressed out. Is, is that how you're feeling today? Are you feeling overwhelmed? Are you feeling... Like you're an overthinker? Are you feeling anxious or stressed? Do you feel like you don't sleep good anymore or you just can't get your mind to stop? And we're going we're gonna to talk about how, I mean, that's not just you. That's like so many people. I actually saw a survey in, uh, that said that over 90% of people said that they're overthinkers. And usually that's not like a good thing. No one overthinks and, and says, man, I'm, re I'm such a nice person. I'm so encouraging to myself, right? You know, most of the time our overthinking is about worries or downplaying ourselves. And I saw another a report and was talking about with church, sir, well, with church, and it was talking about moms felt like their biggest need that the church wasn't addressing was their mental health and, and support for that. And, and it just seems like... The, even when you look in the world this week, even with tragedies and school shootings and things like that, mental health is a huge issue we want to talk about. And, and we're going to be talking about this series, not maybe how we've talked about maybe things in the past, like, like how do we deal with anxiety or things like that. What we're specifically going to be talking about is how do I build mental strength? Because, and life gets hard. Maybe you're even feeling that right now, like it's fall, it's back to school, things are getting crazy, it's busy and there's new pressures or different things like that. So, like, how can I be ready for when those times, those crazy times come? How can I build strength in my mind so that 
when life gets crazy, I'm not overwhelmed. I don't have to overthink. I'm not at crisis. I can, I can withstand the busyness or the hardship because I'm mentally strong. So we're going to be talking about that all, all month long and about building this mental strength. And, and because, you know, our, as we're talking about like that, we, we had Jacob on there as well. You know, our mind is a muscle. And what we're going to see is that we can actually work out this muscle. We can build strength within this muscle. Obviously a lot different than we would our arms or our legs or our muscles into the rest of our body, but we can actually build mental strength. There's a lot of things we can actually do to help our mental health and, and build mental strength. I saw a, um, it was a TikTok, a reel, whatever. It was like someone, they were kind of like talking, interviewing themselves, and they were talking about, oh, I just have like such poor mental health right now, and I'm just really struggling. And, and then they say like, well, did you, um, did you exercise today? Uh, no. Uh, did you leave the house today? Uh, no. Did you go for a walk outside? Uh, no. Did you spend any time talking to anybody else? Uh, no. <laughs> and did you drink any water? Uh, no. Did you actually eat healthy today or just junk food? Uh, no, I didn't eat healthy. It's like, you know, there's a lot of things that we can do that can actually affect our mental health. And it really comes down to that whole idea of what Jacob was talking about. It's about a lifestyle whether that is our physical strength or our mental strength, it takes a lifestyle in order to build strength and, and, and to have mental strength. And, and we're going to be talking about how, throughout this series, how, do, how can I maybe add this thing into my regular routine so I can have mental strength? Because the interesting thing is we're thinking about like our worries or our anxiety or things like that that um, we can actually shape our own thinking. There's an author and a speaker that we're going to be referring to a couple times in this series. His name is John Acoff. He says this. He says, you get to choose your thoughts. Thoughts are something that you hone, not something that you have. I thought that was really interesting. Most people would say, I'm an overthinker. It's just kind of who I am. Or most people just continue on maybe a path where their thinking is full of anxiety or worries, and that's what they focus on. But he says we can actually shape our thoughts, hone our thoughts. We can build strength in our minds to actually face the challenges of life. And he's written this book, um, and, it's, and he would say to himself, he would say about himself that he's a classic overthinker. And so he has learned how to hone his thoughts, to choose his thoughts. He also says this, the Bible begs us to take um, our thinking seriously and to care about what we think. You know, all of our actions in life flow from our mind. They begin with thoughts. And the Bible is begging us to consider our thinking and to, to take our thinking seriously. It has, the Bible has a lot to say. We, there's classic verses, one that we've looked at quite a few times. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says this. It says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's talking about renewing our mind, and that can lead towards transforming our life. So then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, is good, pleasing, and perfect will. You know, it's interesting if you trace back the, the verses that lead up to Romans chapter 12. It begins in, in chapter 11, and it talks about the mind of God, that, that considering the thoughts of God and how great his, his mind is. It says this, Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given thought that God should repay him? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. So it says here, like consider the mind of God. Like how great his mental strength is. How great his thoughts are. The, the, the depths of his wisdom and knowledge to be able to consider all of that is beyond us. And so it says, in view of the great knowledge, wisdom, and mental strength of God, it says this, verse 1 of chapter 12. So it says, therefore, kind of in view of all of those things we just talked about, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. We looked at that uh, back in May, that our worship is not about just singing a song or reading the Bible. Our worship is really offering ourselves to God. 
It says, then it says, do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So this says, if we renew our mind, if we consider our thinking, it can transform our life as we offer ourselves to God. And it says, then we'll be able to know what God's will is. Like then what happens is, is that if we hone our thinking, renewing our mind by offering ourselves to God, that we can start to align our mind and our thoughts with the thoughts of God. The God whose thoughts and wisdom and knowledge is way beyond what we can understand. We can begin to know his will and his ways. It can renew our mind. So this, again, the Bible begs us to consider our thinking, to hone our thinking, to develop this mental strength. But again, if we're going to do that, it's going to mean a lifestyle of change. I was talking to Jacob, and I said, it's more than just going to the gym, right? And he said, yes. For him, it's like nutrition. It's a home gym. It's, he works out all the time. It's people he associates with. It's, it's what he eats, what he does, how he sleeps. All of that plays into it. It's a lifestyle. And for our mental strength, especially if we want to renew our mind with God, it's no different. It's a lifestyle. It's more than just going to the gym to build strength. Now, I know, I know like some people who've had gym memberships and they don't ever even go, right? Like, I know some people like that. Or I know some people who, like, they say, I go to the gym and work out. And they take, like, a casual stroll on the, on the um, like, treadmill. They're not really, like, doing anything to, like, build strength. Like, building strength takes uh, some effort. And just like it's more than just going to the gym, if we want to build mental strength and renew our minds, it, it takes more than just showing up to church. It takes more than just thinking about that, I want to be, have better mental health. It, it's a lifestyle change. It's a lifestyle. And one of the things in a lifestyle is about our pace. Our pace is really has a lot to play into if we want to have a mind that is at peace. We have to consider our pace. We have to create margins. If we want to have a lifestyle where we build mental strength, it means we have to have this routine of life and create margins for things that actually renew our mind. Now, the Bible talks about this thing called the Sabbath. It's, and the Sabbath is like this day of rest. It's actually one of the Ten Commandments to, to, about the Sabbath. We see God created the world in six days in Genesis, and then on the seventh day, he rested. If you think back to what Jacob talked about, he said, you have like your push muscles, and you have your pull muscles, and you have leg day, and then you have cardio. And he says, you didn't want to do those things time and day after day after day, the same things, because you can overwork those muscles. You got to have this routine, and then there's a time of rest along with that as well. If we want to build mental strength, we can't overwork our minds. And I think that's where so many of us are. We overwork our minds. We're, we're working that same muscle over time, day after day after day with no rest. We have to create margins. We have to have time to pause and consider our thinking. We have to have space to rest our mind. That's part of the, the lifestyle of it. Because what it comes down to is you can't expect to have a, a mind at peace when our life is full of chaos. I'll say that again. You can't expect to have a mind at peace when we live a life at a chaotic pace. Our pace and our peace play a lot together. We have to have times where we let our mind muscle rest. We can't excessively work it out. Like I've seen reports even on um, like for physical activity. It talks about if you work out too much excessively that you actually can do damage to your body and be a risk for heart disease. So I take that to, I really consider that a lot. When I think about working out, but, uh, but the same thing is true with our mind. If we're overworking our mind, if our mind is, is at excess, then we have, then we're working that muscle too hard and our life is, uh, then our mind feels like it's overwhelmed, it's overworked, our mind feels stressed and anxious because we haven't had time to rest. We got to have time for a Sabbath to pause, to rest. Now, what do, what do you do to find rest? Now, I, I hear a lot of people like, yeah, hey, I'm really good at resting, like, I can put on my, my sweats and just, you know, binge watch a whole show all weekend and just veg out. Or, or every night, you know, I just scroll through social media and just, you know, just relax. And while that might be physically 
not doing activity, that really is a, a mental rest. Actually, there's so many reports about how like, social media is like poison for our brains, how it actually overstimulates our brains because of the constant switching of things or, the, or it can do um, damage for our mental health because of all the comparison that can happen with that or, or things like that. And so, again, this isn't, those things, while they might bring physical rest, just vegging out on the couch, flipping through so, social media, whatever it might be, that, that doesn't bring rest to our minds. We have to give our mind a rest to find real peace. And what I believe that comes from is our relationship with God. We see this in 1 Peter 5, 6-8. It says this. It says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, or cast all your cares on him, because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. This says, if we're willing to humble ourselves before God, to take all of those things that we're overthinking and say, God, I know I'm not in control of all of this. I'm going to humble myself and look to you. It's not about me controlling it at all. I'm going to trust in you. And if we take all of those cares and we cast them on him, like a lot of us are probably good at, at telling God about our worries and, and our anxiety, but we're not really good at like handing it off to him. But this, this verse here, the cast, means to, to put all of the weight of it on God, to trust in him. And it says if we do that, then we have a mind that's alert and we have a, a, a sober mind. Do you have a mind that's alert or a mind that's just at chaos? It says to have a sober mind. Is your mind under the influence of all the stress and worries and overthinking? Because we're missing out on having a mind that's alert to be able to find real hope and peace. See, if we're willing to humble ourselves before God, to say, God, you're in control of all of this. If we're willing to cast our cares on him, here's what happens to in Isaiah 26, it says this. It says, God, you keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord himself is the rock eternal. Like God is our rock. In the middle of all the uncertainty, in the middle of all of our worries, in the middle of all of our stress, he is the foundation, the real rock. And it says, if we trust in him, that he can bring our minds to this place of perfect peace. But our minds have to be steadfast, looking to him. We see something similar in Romans chapter 8. It says this, those who live according to their flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. So this says we need to hone our thoughts. We need to work our mind muscle and build mental strength is about aligning our mind with God, having our mind set on him and his Spirit. It's, it's, it's an idea that brings us back to that other passage in Romans. To If we really want to transform our mental strength, it means we have to renew our mind because then we can understand God and his ways, offering ourselves to him, humbling ourselves before him, saying, God, I need you. And if we do that, our mind can be full of life and peace instead of stress and chaos. And so it says, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It's does not submit to God's law, nor, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. So the idea of like the flesh, a mind focused on the flesh is thinking, it's, it's a mind focused on myself, it's a mind focused on the things of this world, but a mind set on God and his spirit brings life and peace. So we got to make space in our life to have our mind set on God and his ways if we want to experience that. That means we have to create margins. We can't have a mind at peace if we live at a chaotic pace. So we got to create space for God, space for, to rest our minds, to find renewal so that we can build this mental strength. What do you do to create margins for God? Again, just like 
working out and as a lifestyle is more than just showing up to the gym. It's more than for our mental strength to, to be focused on God and his spirit. It's more than just showing up to church. That's part of it. I'm glad you guys are here today. Fall kickoff, this is a chance for us to kind of push all the craziness aside and to bring our hearts and our minds to, to, to God. So this is a great thing to do. But this is also a reason why we always encourage you to check out the Version Bible app. It's something you can do throughout the week because it's a way that you can take a few minutes of your day and turn your mind towards God, to align your mind with him, to let him renew it and to transform it and to build this mental strength. Here's something else that I do. I have, uh, I have an Apple Watch. I don't know if you have a watch or anything like that. That is a fancy computer thing. Um, but I get these alerts on there. They tell you, like, hey, you need to stand up. You've been sitting around too long. Or they get, like, hey, take a break for mindfulness. And I remember when I first got the watch, I was like, oh, this is stupid. Like, I got, how do I turn these alerts off? How do I turn off these notifications? And it was like bothering me. But what I started to do is whenever I get one of those alerts, I take it as a moment to pause. I, I take, it's, 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 it becomes an alert not just to stand up or to do mindfulness. My mindfulness now is to take a moment and to pray, to take a moment to pause, to stop doing the work or whatever I'm doing, to look around to be observant, but just, just, to, just to open my eyes to God and his ways, to say, in that moment, just quietly, God, thank you for all you've done for me, or God, be my peace in this moment. God, may my mind be set on you. It's just a moment just to, to pause. It's a way that we can build this lifestyle where we, we find real rest for our minds. So I don't know what that looks like for you, what I do know is that if we continue to live at the crazy pace that life throws at us, that our life, our mind isn't going to be filled with chaos. We're going to be an overthinker. We're going to be challenged with anxiety, and, and our mental health won't be good. So we got to have time to rest. And real rest is, is far beyond just scrolling social media or binge-watching TV. It, real rest is found in, in God and his spirit and setting our mind on him. So what does that look like for you? What does it look like for you? Maybe just to actually think about this. Maybe even to write something down. Maybe to open your phone right now and get out your calendar and put something in your calendar. Like, what if you were to, like, schedule some quiet time, some time to pause? What if you were to put that actually, like, in your calendar to make sure that happens? If, if it's important to us, we need to schedule what's important. Or maybe it's just saying... I want to wake up maybe five minutes earlier so I can, you know, look at my YouVersion Bible app before I head to work or school. Maybe it's doing that at night when you get home. I need to decompress. And so instead of just scrolling through TikTok until I fall asleep in bed, I'm going to take a few minutes just to, you know, look at in, in God's word and find real rest there and to cast my cares on him. So what does that look like for you? Take a moment to actually think about that so that you can actually shift your thoughts and your mind and build mental strength. If we're going to do it, it begins, the lifestyle switch begins with humbling ourselves before God, casting all of our cares on him so that he might shift our mind so that we can, so that we can experience life and peace that only he can give. So I want to encourage you to, to think about what that actually looks like for you. And one other verse says this in 1 Timothy 4, it says, for physical training is of some value. But godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. Now, like Jacob shared some stuff, that's all really important, that physical training. In fact, physical exercise can actually help our mental uh, health as well. But again, that, has, that physical training has a lot of value. But godliness, if we, if we have a mind that trusts in him, if we offer ourselves to him, if we humble ourselves before him, that brings so much more value to our life. It can actually build our mental strength. It can actually bring peace and life to our minds. It can move us from a mind that's overworked, overwhelmed, and overthinking to a place of peace. That's the peace I want you to experience. But we can't keep living at a chaotic pace. We got to hit the pause button and take time to turn our minds to God. Let's do that right now. I ask you just to close your eyes with me right now and take a moment in the quietness now, just to pause, to maybe ask God to be your peace, to be your strength, that rock, to maybe cast your cares on him, 
to maybe humble yourself and say, God, I need you in my life. I'm, I'm trying to control it all. And quiet in this moment, think about this question. What am I going to do this week to create space, to create margins, to quiet my soul before God? Lord God, I just know that there are so many here today that this is a real hard issue where their mind has been racing for so long. It's full of stress and anxiety. And, and God, you know, it's, we can't just stop. We need, we need your help. We need your, your life and, and your peace. You're the real source of peace. So, God, we humble ourselves before you, saying we need you, God. Will you transform our minds, transform our lives as we renew our mind? May we align our mind with your spirit so that we might experience the life and the peace that only you can give. God, as we go through this week, convict us of the commitments that we make to you to create margins, to spend time with you. Give us that rest and the peace that we need. Help us to build this mental strength so that life doesn't have to be overwhelming, but we can find life and peace in you. In your name we pray. Amen. Um, one of the other thing I want to just mention before we continue is we have a couple books that we are recommending throughout this series. And uh, I mentioned that John Acoff, we actually have two of his books for sale at the cafe that you might want to check out. One is called Soundtracks. We're going to be talking a little more about that next week. But you can uh, find that book out there. And then there's a teen version as well. For If you have a student in your, in your home, you might want to check that out. There's also another book. We don't have copies of it here, but you can get it. There's some links and information about this other book, Winning the War in Your Mind. But we also have in the YouVersion Bible app uh, a Bible um, reading plan that goes along with that, Winning the War in Your Mind as well. So some great resources to continue to help us to build strength. You want, again, check those out at the cafe. Let's take this time to ask God to be our life and our peace, to offer ourselves to him, to humble ourselves before him. So let's stand and just make that commitment today.